Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Joy of Puzzles. I have for you today a puzzle titled Hundreds and Hundreds of Pencils. And it was published in 2017 by White Mountain Puzzle. White Mountain Puzzle has been around since 1978 and they were originally a company that manufactured posters. They are located in a rural community right near Mount Washington in the White Mountains. And for those of you who don't know, that would be New Hampshire. The original founders of the company are lucky enough to still be involved. They passed it along to their respective sons, but supposedly they are still participating in some of the day-to-day the -day business. doesn't happen very often anymore, and um, the company itself has been recognized as one of the top family-owned business in all of New Hampshire, and one year they were even invited to the White House to talk about their success. Uh, I mean, they compare themselves jokingly to Ben and Jerry's as far as having started at the same time and have not quite reached the same level of success as those folks. Um, website's well worth checking out. They got lots of stuff and uh, supposedly if you go there in the store they always have puzzles you can build. I've never done it but yeah maybe someday. The artist for this puzzle is Maureen Ruprecht. Now, I couldn't find a home page for her art, and it seems that she was more business-oriented. When I, when I search for her name, all I can find is this image on multiple puzzle websites, uh, all relating to her, and they all have the same little text tidbit underneath it saying that she glued hundreds of pencils into a picture frame, and that was what created this. Now, I did kind of, at first I said to myself, is it really hundreds? Uh, and I kind of counted the rows and did some math. Yeah, there might be about 750 pencils in here, so I'm sure that took some time. And There's a part of me that wonders if she got um, permission from all the companies listed here to show it. Not, not that anyone would care, I mean, advertising is advertising. She founded a marketing and advertising firm back in 1976 called Glenn Graphics. And that eventually got changed into the Glenn Group. And in 2017, they got rebranded again as Drive Brand Studios. She grew up in Massachusetts and settled up in New Hampshire, actually not far from White Mountain Puzzles, coincidentally. This is a thousand piece puzzle, and it took just over eight hours to build and that was with some help so this is definitely a challenging one and that's how it's touted when you go to all the websites they're like oh my goodness it's so hard um yeah it was maybe a step higher than normal anyways we'll get to the review in a minute strategy how did i build this thing well my first thought was finish the border obviously and then i said well let's pull all the blue and green and I realized there was a lot more blue and green pencils in here than I originally anticipated. So I just ended up with a mess of pieces in the middle that I kind of abandoned. Uh, instead, went after pink and orange. They really stood out. Uh, and way less of them. And there's also what I'll call a couple uh, carpenter's pencils in here. Those are those double wide, if anyone does that stuff for a living, kind of rectangular shape instead of round. There's a few of those. So we kind of focused on those, and I got some help along the way, and we went after graphics, and certain types of text really stood up. We just ended up building distinctive little puzzles, pieces, and sections all around the edges and in the middle. <laughs> At some point, we kind of grew frustrated and pulled out all the individual pieces that we had stacked up in there, and took all the segments we had been building and place them where they belonged. And that really made it pick up pace after that. I felt once we kind of got to the 50% mark, the puzzle really became easy. It's just that initial kickoff of what do you start with? You always kind of knew where they went, because you didn't, unless you picked a plain yellow pencil. But even then, you could tell by the pieces next to it, the pencils next to it, where it belonged. Um, yeah, once I said, once you get past the 50% mark, it kind of really goes quick. We, we jumped back to the blue and the green and um, wrapped it up that way. Let's review the puzzle. In, we're going to review it in four different categories on a scale of 1 to 5. The first category is the puzzle material quality. 
Well, it's White Mountain, so it's going to be a three, right in the middle. Uh, pretty decent. Nothing. It doesn't detract from the puzzle in any way, but at the same time, it doesn't blow you away. I mean, th it's that medium grade paper board that they use. The bond is usually really good between the image. Uh, still, lots of dust and little pieces floating around in the in the box afterwards. A little under the tabs that break off. But so I'm gonna give it a three. The next category is the puzzle cut quality and the puzzle piece design. This is also going to be a three. Uh, White Mountain does some non-traditional shapes, which is nice. It certainly helps uh, with the build. You know, you don't you're constantly picking up four different shapes and trying to figure out where they go. The cut quality is decent. It didn't detract. Uh, certainly in this puzzle, well, you never doubted where you put a piece. Uh, there was no opportunity really to put a piece in the wrong place, so it's I can't really say how well they all fit in that respect. But it doesn't detract at all. So right in the middle, three. They're very, very consistent. The third category is difficulty. I normally use the eight-hour build as my mark for a normal difficulty puzzle to do on my own. Well, this one took just over eight hours with some help, so this is going to be a four. And and clearly looking at it, you know when you pick a puzzle like this that you're in for a challenge, right? You can't just say, oh, let's build the sky. No, look, there's hundreds of pieces with little blue on them or green and, and yellow pencils. I mean, it almost seems it's like you can't figure out how many there are. Um, you really kind of kind of get into it for a little while and build up a little head of steam and then you hit that critical mass turning point where suddenly it all goes smoothly it's definitely a four um, yeah not for your not for your rookie if you give this to someone who's never built a thousand piece pulp before they may never build another one again <laughs> just out of frustration uh, <laughs> all right frameability the fourth category and by far the most subjective of them all if I was the type of person that built a puzzle once, sealed it forever, hung it somewhere, would this make the list? And the answer is no. This is a two. Um, I mean, it's definitely art. It's creative. Uh, but what would you do with it, right? I, maybe in a classroom environment, or if you were teaching an art class, this is something that you would find hanging there. Or, hey, if your kid is into drawing, or I should say a kid, if anyone is into... Uh, that type of work, pencil art and things of that nature, sure. But I feel that audience is not the general audience that's more uh, a <laughs> much smaller group of people and I'm not in that group, so I'm giving it a two. Overall, how would I rank this puzzle? It's a three. I would build it again. Uh, the difficulty being high is to me a bonus. Uh, it's kind of what I want sometimes. And the quality being in the middle, yeah, I would definitely build this again. I would loan it, though, only to people that I knew that were definitely, we'll call them hardcore puzzlers, because your average person may get frustrated with this if they're not really into it. It's not something you want to give them as their first exposure to a puzzle of this magnitude, right? I mean, it's it does take a certain person to attack something like this. At the end, you always see me take the pieces and put them in a little plastic baggie and save those forever. <laughs> I wish the person who would loan me this puzzle had done that because it's missing five pieces. Good grief. Ah, no, wait, I'm sorry, this one's only missing one. The puzzle that I'm building now is missing five pieces. Just one piece is missing. Um, I will loan that out to somebody and uh, warn them ahead of time and it'll be okay. What else can I say about this puzzle? The the dif difficulty being above is a little bit, you know, negated by the fact that every piece you kind of know its orientation, or at least you know two out of the possible four positions. The boundary and the borders, you can kind of build your way in there. They were nice enough to include like eraser tops and things like that. So those were other hints that were out there on how to build. There are some graphics tucked around in here that worked as little anchor points, so to speak, as far as where sections of the puzzle, puzzle had to be established. And the text helps an awful lot. Um, yeah, going at this again, 
I would not go for the blue and green. I would definitely go pink and orange. Um, focus on... There's also some gray tucked in there. Not many of them. And then the big uh, carpenter's pencils were very helpful. And not many white pencils either, and those that did had very distinct lettering on them, so those were also great little hints to how to get this thing done. Alright, I've talked enough. I appreciate everyone out there who takes 10 minutes out of a day to watch one of these videos. And, uh, perhaps you can click the like button or even subscribe to the channel. Greatly appreciated. I look forward to bringing you another puzzle video very soon, even though the next one is missing five pieces. Oh my goodness, I reveal the secret or the surprise ending ahead of time. Oh well, I'm sure you will all forgive me. Thanks again. Talk to you later. Bye.